Good evening to one and all present here in this virtual meet. On behalf of Indian Institute of Production Engineers, IAP, Student Chapter and Department of Mechanical Engineering, Janssen Institute of Technology, I welcome you all for this live webinar. And today's topic is Model Based Systems Engineering and Open Standards. Here we have Mr. Ilavarasan Dharmasiran with us as a resource person. Now I like to intro our guest. Yes, Mr. Elavarasan Dharmasilan is a technical expert within Model and Engineering Private Limited, a 100% owned subsidiary of Model and AB Sweden. He has 14 plus years of experience in various phases of model based development and model based systems engineering using various tools such as Modelica, Model and Impact, Dimola, Simpact, MATLAB, and many more. His domains are multi-body vehicle dynamics, powertrain, hybrids, HVAC and controls. He has a simulation expertise in automotive performance, efficiency, drivability, handling and HVAC simulations. And he has worked in with clients like Toyota, Ford, Honda, Jaguar Land Rover, Mahindra and Tata Motors across various regions which include India, Germany, USA and UK. Now I request Mr. Elverson to take over the session. Have a great and happy learning. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi, hi, I want all. Thank you very much for the great introduction, uh, Mr. Krishna Kumar. Uh, I'm glad to uh, uh, share my experience uh, with, with your students and with uh, uh, general audience here. Uh, so today's topic is model-based systems engineering and open standards with an electric vehicle case study. So let me go into agenda. So I'll be briefing a little bit about uh, uh, a model on. Then I will talk about the product development and system engineering concepts. Then uh, in general simulations in automotive design. Then modeling open standards, uh, the basically open standards like modeling and FMI. Then the case study about multi objective modeling and dynamic system simulation of an electric pickup truck. And if time permits, I will go a little bit about uh, a demo of uh, model on impact and uh, covering the topics that we have seen earlier. About me, uh, I think you already covered. So I'll jump into about model on a little bit. So model on is an industry leader in model based systems engineering with the goal of advancing open standard technologies namely Modelica and FMI, allowing customers to leverage their tools of choice and share models through their product development cycle. We serve a clientele base across a wide range of industry sectors, which includes some of the world's largest companies. So we have model on libraries. Your libraries are built on the which called Modelica, and it delivers the state of art system models for a wide range of automotive, aerospace, industrial equipment, energy, and products. Model on libraries are supported many Modelica based tools and are compatible with our Modelica based modeling environment called Model on Impact. So, so there is a tool called Model on Impact which supports all our Modelica based libraries. Our industry ex expertise range over different types of applications in different industries. For example, thermal management, motorsports, electric and hybrid vehicles, etc. in automotive then aircraft dynamics, hybrid and electric propulsion, fuel system, etc., in aerospace, then thermal nuclear, solar, power plants, renewable energy in power plant in energy sector, natural commercial refrigeration in industrial sector. Okay, so let's jump on to actual uh, topics. So I would like to cover about uh, product development concepts. So to start with uh, concept of requirements, for any products, requirements are very basic elements and are at the center of the theme of that product. Okay, so since my background is mostly in automotive industry, so I will throughout I will use some of the use cases from automotive industry. So let's take a case of automotive. So <clears throat> look at the picture here. So on the left hand side, I, we have a, a fender flap, fender flaps marked. On the right hand side, we have roof rails and rear spoilers marked. So do we really need these things in our cars? If yes, why? So I'm not going to tell the answer now. We can Google and uh, and the answer is basically like uh, there is definitive pur purpose for these 
even small parts. Each and every part in the vehicle needs to be attached to a base requirement. For example, each bolt you add should be associated with a requirement or need. So requirements basically help in making the design decisions. What is my cost length? What is my breadth, uh, cost breadth, height, etc. What is my car engine's power, torque and speed limit, etc. So these questions can be answered by way of uh, capturing the requirements. Okay. Then jumping on to next topic within product development is about life cycles. So product development basically follows certain idealized life cycles. Um, uh, it, basically in uh, product development uh, manufacturing companies, so they follow sequential product development methods and actual process can vary between different manufacturers. So cycles are comparable with the software development life cycles like waterfall method or B model. Product requirements are captured and frozen at the start of the development. Each individual phase will have to wait for the previous phase to be completed. Contrary to waterfall method, V model put, up, put most of on modular design and testing at each stage. So on the left hand side, I have listed the waterfall method. On the right hand side, I have listed the V model. Basically, what this slide uh, is saying, so in general, uh, the product development is following sequential product development. So one phase has to wait for the other phase to be completed. But contrary to waterfall method, V model has more stress on uh, the testing of your uh, design. And at each phases, you got uh, more number of uh, test phases and uh, at each level of your design, so you have a corresponding test phase. Okay, so a little, little bit about, about complexities of product today's product development. So today's vehicle development, again, I'm taking a case of automotive. So today's vehicle development needs to satisfy multiple customer and legal ob objectives. For example, in, in a typical car, a customer would like to see what is the efficiency of the car, what is the performance of the car, uh, how the drivability is, uh, how the safety and comfort uh, metrics are. So often these objectives are mutually exclusive, like better fuel economy may cost bad performance, better performance may cost bad drivability, better handling performance may cost bad ride comfort, uh, etc. vice versa. And today's vehicle development need to integrate multiple components and uh, it involves complex technologies covering multiple domains. So for example, today's car actually involves domains like mechanical, electrical, thermal, controls, etc. in order to satisfy the above objectives. And also in today's product development, uh, it needs to be accelerated not to meet the growing competition among their competitors. Okay, then what is the solution to address the complexities? So the solution is basically following system engineering principles in the design process. So traditionally, product development sees individual departments working in silos. That means independently on their components, just focusing on to fulfill their component requirements. For example, let's assume in the vehicle development uh, company, so you got an engine team focuses on their own requirements and work independently with the less interaction with other teams like uh, transmission team or driveline teams. Okay, then what will happen? So this component focused development approach may yield better components, but at the end of the day, when assembled together, it may lead to system level complexities or system level failures due to incompatible transmission or incompatible driveline. So solution is to take the top down approach of thinking and designing a product as a whole system. So instead of looking at individual component or uh, uh, teams working in silos, teams working in, uh, independently, so we need to take a top-down approach and think the product as a system. In simple terms, system engineering encourages to look at a product as a single system or a holistic system rather than integration of independent components. The design process starts with the system level requirements and these requirements are functionally decomposed into subsystem level requirements. Then design and verification takes place both at component levels and at system levels. Systems engineering basically ensues creation of better systems on one hand and also better components on the other hand. So traditional V cycle, uh, which we have seen in the earlier uh, slide, still holds good for this kind of uh, systems engineering driven development. So systems approach works not only for this product development, but also to study about general systems that we see in the real, real world. For example, environment system, political system, healthcare system, human body itself as a system, etc. 
even simple real life problems can be effectively addressed if we start to take the holistic approach in dealing with the those problems okay so next to talk about model based systems engineering that that's our main topics model based systems engineering so far we covered general product, product development concepts product development life cycle then system engineering then we will learn now about the model based systems engineering so there is an organization called incosi international council for systems engineering they term model based systems engineering as formalized application of modeling to support system requirements design analysis verification and validation activities beginning in the conceptual design phase and continuing throughout the development and later life cycle phases so basically they are saying that <clears throat> application of models in each phase of your product development so then what is called model a physical mathematical or otherwise logical representation of a system entity phenomenon or process is basically called model it can be a requirement model it can be a architecture model or it can be a system simulation model or the very well known cat model or ca models which are all used in the design process So MBSC, the short form of model based system engineering, promotes use of component and system models in each phase of the development cycle, so that iterative and intermediate verification of the product design is made possible by the simulation of the models. So here again, the V cycle is listed. Um, so <clears throat> on the left hand side is your actual design, and on the right hand side is your uh, verification. So here you see. contrary to the previous slide previous v cycle you see intermediate loops basically that means that iterative i mean basically iterative verification process so since we are going to use models in each phase for example requirement models at requirement stage architecture models and at architectural stage then system models at system stage component models at component design stage then the same model can be utilized in the verification phase also so basically like it improves your design process you are able to like uh, identify the failures failure modes in your design as early as possible in your uh, design that means that on the left hand side itself so that when you go on the right hand side so you will you will literally see less number of defects in your design so this is called in product development domain it's called um, front loaded design or left shifting of design okay okay so since we have talked about models and simulations i think it, it it's it may be uh, suitable to talk about uh, simulations and go go deep into simulations so <clears throat> so i will cover a little bit about about uh, simulations in automotive design the role of simulations in automotive design so it reduce extensive physical testing avoid manual errors during testing save design and testing cost reduce the lead time to product development and you can see the pictures the different simulations are being used in automotive design and it supports product innovation also so types of simulations used in automotive design the very well known finite element analysis so finite it it follows finite element method solving partial differential equations applications range uh, crash analysis durability analysis nvh analysis electromagnetic analysis etc then other type of simulation is called computational fluid dynamics so it's basically finite volume method solving uh, partial differential equations applications range among aerodynamics cooling climate control and lubrication then uh, there is one type of simulation called multi body dynamics so it's basically mechanism modeling uses using bodies joints and forces it requires solving of differential and algebraic equations and application range among uh, suspension design for handling and ride comfort tuning etc so basically i categorize these simulations as as like a, a three dimensional modeling and simulation of physical system because these models require three dimensional model uh, either cad model or uh, three dimensional multi body models the next type of simulation is called system simulation where uh, modeling of system physics covering multiple domains is possible it requires solving of ordinary differential equations it can do both dynamic simulation and steady state simulations and applications range among uh, concept design attribute simulation system sizing and, uh, and optimization control verification etc 
Then another type of simulation people generally use in product development scenarios are called the controls algorithm simulation, where nowadays the <coughs> sophisticated electronic, uh, electronic control units are basically modeled using uh, um, simulation tools that's called algorithm modeling and they are verified in different levels like modeling loop verification, software loop verification, or in the loop verification. And, and basically, I mean, it involves continuous and discrete control system modeling. And applications would be like uh, different controls in, in today's vehicle, for example, brake, brake controls, suppressor controls, battery controls, etc., battery management system, etc. And I categorize these simulations as zero D, uh, zero dimensional, it's called data driven models and one dimensional transfer function state space types of modeling of physical system. So both type of simulations are modeling of physical system. So one is basically require uh, three dimensional models and the other these two require basically like a zero dimensional or one dimensional models. Okay. So where this dynamic system simulation actually can be positioned among the entire uh, uh, space of uh, simulation within automotive design okay so i have an x y z graph so where on the x axis i have controls on the y axis i have amplitude and the uh, and the uh, and the y axis on i'm having frequency and the z axis i'm having amplitude okay so uh, beyond around 30 gets of system frequency and beyond certain level of amplitude so we need this three dimensional based modeling and simulations for example in the large amplitude simulations can be like a crash simulations durability durability simulations and the large frequency simulations can be called like as NV simulations, etc. But within this um, uh, <clears throat> uh, within the scope of like a, a less than 30 gate system frequency, we can involve these zero dimensional, one dimensional multi-body system models and uh, which can include almost all of the controls that, that is being used in, in today's products. So, so system simulation basically bridges the gap between your three dimensional world and the controls world. So basically, if you see in this in the in this understanding, your system simulation is basically trying to bridge your three-dimensional simulations with your controls controls world. It interacts with both structural and controls worlds. It provides boundary conditions to three-dimensional simulations. It has some connection with between uh, with the three-dimensional models also. The system simulation can be used to provide boundary conditions to 3D simulations, and these system simulation models are used in controls development also in order to verify your controls uh, um, basically these system simulation models are also used it also provides insight how system behaves in different dynamic conditions so that concept evaluation component sizing and optimization are, are made possible by this as latest system simulation models are used to train artificial intelligence algorithms to make digital twins so simulations are much faster than 3d three-dimensional based finite element analysis and the CFD simulations. Basically, FE and CFD simula simula simulations take a longer time to simulate, but these system simulation models are a bit faster. Okay, so we, we have covered about uh, product development concepts, we have covered about modeling and we have covered about uh, simulation, system simulation. Now we will get into some uh, modeling open standards. So I'm going to talk about a couple of open standards called Modelica and FMI. So open standards play important roles in realizing successful MBSE since an open-minded integrated approach is required from the start of the development in order to tackle complexities. So we covered about complexities in today's product development and we covered the need of systems engineering and model-based system engineering in the product development. And this basically requires like open mindset and integrated approach from the start of the development. And Morlika, an open standard, and FMI, another open standard, these basically help in achieving this, um, um, this, this approach. So Morlika, an open standard, object-oriented intuitive physical modeling language, simplifies multi-domain dynamic system modeling and allows easy integration with other design artifacts. So FMI, being an open standard, file exchange format, simplifies model portability among different design and simulation tools. I have a few slides covering uh, both of these open standards. So what is Marlika? So Marlika is a free modeling language developed and owned by the Marlika Association. It's a non-profit organization. Around 80 members are there, uh, mostly industrial uh, companies, uh, <coughs> industries. 
active development through the Morlika Design Group and develops the largest free library for multi-domain models, the Morlika Standard Library. And the Morlika language, it's basically an object-oriented modeling language. It's a causal and equation-based language, supports multi-domain and modular modeling. For more information, we should look at morlika.org. So Morlika ecosystem. So on one hand, we got tools that supports the Morlika language. Morlika itself is not a tool, it's a language. And there are tools to support the Morlika language. So for example, there are a lot of commercial and open source tools. So one is called Morlan Impact, provided, provided by Morlan. Then there are other tools. Then uh, there are model libraries, which were developed based on the Morlika language. And almost all of the tools can support these libraries. And to list few Malika tools available, so commercial libraries, Marlon Impact, Katia Daimola, Imagine Lab, etc. And there are free Marlika environments also like Open Marlika, Psychos, etc. And worry of Marlika. So as I mentioned, Marlika itself is not a tool, it's a language, but we need a tool to support the language. So in any Marlika tool, we got a graphical and simulation editor, uh, which basically <coughs> the Malika simulation environment, it can be a free or commercial tool. And uh, behind the scene, there will be textual description of the models, which follows the Malika language. So it's basically physical equation based modeling. You can see on the left hand side, there is a typical, uh, there is an example Malika model. So each icon here represents the physical component. For example, there is an electrical resistance, mechanical device, pump, motor, gear, etc. And the connection lines between these components basically represent the, represents the actual physical coupling, uh, like uh, wire in case of electrical modeling, fluid flow, heat flow, etc. A component consists of connected subcomponents. So inside components, there, can, there may be further subcomponents. And, and it is described, and, and the, the least level of component is basically described by equations. The, the equations follow the Malika language. So beginning the components, set of equations representing the physics of the components. For example, in this case, so if you see inside the gear component here, there are like a couple of components. Uh, there is a lossy gear component and elastic backlash component. And if you <clears throat> go through the, the textual description of the elastic backlash, then you get to see the actual physics model or physics typed in, in, with the Monica language. So for example, for uh, uh, LSO backlash basically has like um, spring and damper. So we got equations for uh, spring and damper. Physics equations for spring and damper. So physical modeling versus block oriented modeling. So Marlika is basically a castle modeling. So it's a declarative language that just requires the developer to define the problem at a high, higher level and leaves solution to the simulation tool. Whereas the block oriented modeling, so you need to define the order of the calculations. Like, for example, in the next slide. So, uh, for example, here, the flexible shaft is modeled in terms of uh, the equations in block-oriented modeling, whereas it is simply a, a component to drag upon. And begin the scene, you got physical equations without any directionality. You write the equation and it will work. The tool, simulation tool will take care of the, the processing. Okay. So uh, since we talked about uh, the Malika as a language, so should we need to uh, go and type the language in every possible case? No, it's not required. There are building blocks already. There are free building blocks provided by Malika Association itself. It's called Malika Standard Library. So which cover almost entire uh, possible engineering domains, for example, electrical domain, magnetic domain, mechanics, fluid, media, thermal, etc. So the, these have got plenty of building blocks. And you can simply drag and drop the blocks and you can connect them together. You can create a system model. On top of this free st standard library, there are plenty of libraries available in the Malika community. So some are free and some are commercial. So um, uh, there are plenty of libraries. So Modlan provides a um, uh, few commercial libraries. Um, and you can even uh, get to see there are libraries outside of common engineering domains like uh, human physiology libraries there, biochemical libraries there, etc. In general, commercial tools and libraries are always suggested for industry deployable solutions, while free libraries and tools always can be uh, uh, used as a starter or uh, not to explore Modlika. 
Then going into next topic uh, of open standard, uh, it's called functional markup interface, FMI. It is a sister, sister technology to Modelica, maintained by Modelica Association. Standardized way for models from several tools to interact. So <clears throat> it has two methods to interact, co-simulation and model exchange. In co-simulation, each model contains in its own uh, solver or integrator. And model exchange models from several tools integrated by one master. Allows for export and import of models to and from simulation environments that does not support Modelica. Example, for example, uh, you got plenty of simulation tools. So the FMI provides the way to connect between those tools. Okay. For example, the Modelica environment can be integrated with Excel environment or MATLAB simulating or Adam, Simpack, CallMaker, etc. So again, in order to find more details, so uh, one would like to see uh, www.fmistandard.org, their website. So it's basically like extend the family of collaborative software. So on one hand, you got Modelica supporting tools. On the other hand, you got uh, other commercial tools. Then uh, the FMI provides the way to like integrate these uh, uh, tools or, or the models developed in these tools. Okay. So, so far we have covered product development concepts, model basis engineering, then uh, uh, modeling open standards. So now let's go into a case study where I would like to talk about multi-objective system modeling and dynamic simulation of an electric pickup truck. So we use these technologies, Modelica uh, and FMI, and we created a model to mimic uh, a real world uh, example of an electric pickup truck. So we try to model an upcoming electric pickup truck. So pickup truck, you can see this picture. You can uh, um, uh, relate to this picture. So uh, it's basically an electric pickup truck. And we referred the data available online for this vehicle and incorporated very detailed multi-body and multi-domain models for this vehicle. And this model is able to predict different uh, attributes basically uh, of this vehicle. For example, range of the vehicle, performance of the vehicle, drivability, feel of the vehicle, handling performance of the vehicle, and ride comfort of the vehicle. So as I mentioned, these attributes almost like cover the less than 30 gauge frequency of that particular vehicle. So this is the top level um, view of that model. So <clears throat> you got powertrain as a as a uh, top load subsystem and chassis as top load subsystem and brakes. And uh, these models used model on commercial libraries called vehicle dynamics library, electrification library, and liquid cooling library. So e this, these models involve like uh, both multi-body and multi-domain based models. And uh, it followed modular approach capturing least components like suspension members, tires, drive drivetrain shaft, joints, etc. So it is detailed enough for the studies intended. And it is configurable to pick right fidelity to speed up the simulation. So basically, like, uh, so we simulated five different attributes. So we varied the fidelity of the uh, components so that, for example, for uh, rain simulation, we may not need a detailed chassis model. For uh, right comfort simulation, we may not need a detailed uh, powertrain model. So we varied the complexity of the model and we were able to perform the simulations. And and as I mentioned, this contains detailed architecture capturing the least components so that the scalability in the in, in feature is, is made easy here. So to talk about a little bit about uh, the powertrain of this vehicle. So this vehicle has like uh, four electric motors powering each car, each wheel of uh, the, the vehicle. Um, and it has uh, its own uh, motor and uh, transmission um, connected to the uh, each axle. And at the center, it has a big battery, battery pack, and uh, it is being effectively cooled by um, uh, cooling system. Um, and uh, this cooling system is also cooling the individual motors also. And we got a powertrain controller, uh, which which actively varies the torque that goes into each motor in order to like uh, uh, help the vehicle in in um, stabilizing uh, during corners. And uh, DC machine. Uh, this is basically like a, a 140 kilo, 147 kilowatt uh, uh, power motor and uh, 140 newton meter torque uh, of motor. Then uh, it can take maximum current of 400 ampere. And the modeling again, uh, uh, it's a bit detailed. So we captures 
we, we, we capture the core model, uh, model of the motor characteristic and also the thermal and the electrical characteristics of the motor. So transmission, so it contains a single speed gear with the ratio of 12.5 uh, and we included uh, gear compliance and backlash, etc. So battery pack, again, um, it's a big battery, battery pack. So it has like 119 cells in series, 49 cells in parallel with 105 kilowatt hour uh, battery capacity. And we model the um, uh, battery characteristics in detail uh, up to cell level along with uh, the thermal, thermal ca uh, characteristics of the battery. So powertrain controller, as I mentioned, we included a uh, torque vectoring based powertrain controller in order to help the vehicle to steer during tight corners. So which basically like sense the uh, wheel slip and uh, or the slip angle variation and it, uh, it basically varies the torque that goes into each motor of the, uh, of the vehicle. And the powertrain cooling system, so again it's a it, detailed cooling system model here um, uh, and it, it has a, a radiator helping the cooling system uh, when required. And chassis model, so this contain uh, um, uh, front double wishbone and rear filing suspension uh, and uh, this is the suspension and tires are uh, model in detail. So suspension again it's air suspension uh, uh, since it's a pickup truck and, and individual details are modeled in multi-body fashion. Uh, tires we used Paseka tire model and it's a bit detailed to capture all the uh, simulation that, simulations that we would like to see. And this is the multi-body visualization of the vehicle. So as I mentioned, the battery pack is basically placed at the center of the vehicle. Then you got four motors at four corners uh, along with the transmission and uh, powering individual axles. So these models are uh, uh, validated using a bench and unit test cases, but we didn't have any uh, real world test data to uh, correlate against. But if you get the test data, we can correlate. So finally, we take the model and we um, uh, we apply it onto the test setup so that we can do the simulations that we intended. Basically, we need to attach it to a driver model and uh, and the environment model and a road model uh, in order to drive the simulations. The first simulation that we did is a rain simulation. So uh, basically, we we drive the vehicle <coughs> uh, on a drive cycle, repeat, repeated NEDC drive cycle. Uh, until the battery gets depleted or uh, it reaches the lowest SOC. Uh, then we observe the vehicle range that uh, the range uh, in kilometers that the vehicle is able to uh, attain. So basically it was able to attain 182 miles uh, with the 70% usable SOC. And uh, throughout uh, the battery temperature is able to be maintained uh, within 50 degree Celsius with the use of uh, uh, cooling system and controls. And the next simulation is performance simula simulation. It's basically like applying the full throttle acceleration. And, uh, and the key metrics observed were like 0 to 60 miles per hour was achieved in 5.35 seconds and 0 to 100 miles per hour was achieved in 10 seconds. And the drivability is so basically like uh, it's similar to uh, uh, full throttle acceleration. But uh, we let the vehicle to like uh, stable in a, in, a, in a constant speed. Then we suddenly, the driver suddenly applies the throttle at about like hundred percent uh, throttle condition, uh, so that it excites your drive line into shuffle motion. So, uh, <clears throat> so here you can see uh, the shuffle movement because of that uh, sudden uh, throttle application by the driver, and it is experienced throughout uh, different um, uh, variables in, in, uh, in the simulation. So, example, uh, vehicle speed, uh, in motor speed and uh, vehicle uh, longitudinal accelerations, etc. The key metrics like uh, the shuffle frequency is observed at around 1.4 hertz, which is within the human perceivable range. And if you see here this plot, uh, uh, the pitch rate of motor, vehicle and uh, uh, driver level uh, uh, accelerations are plotted. Uh, and you can see that the motor tends to pitch more than what driver used to see. So that, that, that's basically typical uh, what, what we experience in the actual vehicle. And handling simulation. 
So here uh, we are driving uh, the vehicle around a tight corner at, at uh, high constant uh, speed. Uh, but again, uh, here uh, we have simulated two scenarios, one with uh, proportional control, uh, another with the uh, torque vectoring control that I discussed in the previous slide. Um, so basically like the proportional control, you don't actively vary the torque that goes into each motor so that uh, taking corner will be a bit difficult, uh, clearing the corner will be a bit difficult. But in case of uh, torque vectoring control, you are actively varying the uh, torque that uh, that goes into individual motor and you are able to, I mean, the vehicle is able to like uh, um, clearly um, uh, pass through the corner. Yeah, there is a uh, animation here. So, the green uh, car basically uh, incorporates the torque vectoring control and it is able to uh, uh, pass through the corner. Uh, without hitting the, uh, uh, without going into sideways. The next simulation that we performed is ride comfort. So where we 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 drive the vehicle um, um, along series of bumps in the road, and uh, let the um, um, uh, different parts of the vehicle uh, to see the vibration of that uh, road imperfections, and capture the different frequencies that we observed uh, from from. Uh, uh, different parts of the vehicle. For example, so we measure uh, frequency at uh, motor level, frequency at uh, vehicle center of gravity level, and at uh, at driver level. So the key metrics that we observed here, like the vertical acceleration, uh, root mean square value is around like 1.95 meter per second square, uh, which is actually tolerate tolerable for humans. If it goes beyond that, it, it will become intolerable. Uh, then uh, the sprung mass frequency is at around uh, one hertz. This is basically the, the uh, uh, desired by your uh, suspension system. Uh, again, this is this is again in acceptable range. And then uh, road induced frequencies at around uh, eight hertz. Uh, and we have plotted the vertical acceleration at driver seat, uh, which is less compared to the vehicle level and motor level, which is actually uh, um, desirable. The driver should feel less vibration compared to the other parts of the vehicle. Okay, uh, an animation here. Results and summary discussion. So we, as I discussed, so we are uh, we, <clears throat> we we achieved some results and uh, we try to compare it to some reference values announced for that particular uh, vehicle. It's still yet to be a released vehicle. So we were able to match almost the numbers uh, for range and uh, the performance, even without uh, proper uh, data uh, or with less data available online okay for uh, for range and acceleration for drivability it's it's a subjective matrix and it falls within the uh, uh, human perceivable range uh, uh, applicable for this class of vehicle and handling safety uh, again it's subjective here uh, ride comfort again um, as i mentioned uh, it is within the literature uh, reference range okay so next to the, ne ne next thing to discuss about like why are we doing these kind of simulations basically like in, during the design process so you do these kind of uh, simulations in design process in order to uh, verify your uh, 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 parameter configurations. So for example, in this case, we, we started with one particular set of configuration uh, and we simulated these scenarios, but, uh, uh, but there may be possibility in changing the parameters, for example, tuning the suspension stiffness, suspension damping, et cetera. And you, you will be able to vary your handling performance or your ride comfort performance. So that kind of, uh, uh, tunability and uh, parameter speeds, etc. You can do using these uh, models, and these are helpful in design process. And also, as I mentioned, there are like uh, many objectives, and there are many parameters in the vehicle. So, how to find the trade-off? How to find the best possible configurations that can be actually analyzed using these models with the help of some optimization tools? Also, so for example, uh, uh, you can you can run uh, degrees of uh, uh, Design of experiments or optimization runs over these models, and and you can vary the uh, uh, parameters in a wide range, and you can uh, arrive at uh, optimal configuration so that you get a better range uh, by not affecting your performance, and you get you get you can get better handling by not affecting your ride comfort, etc. So these are kind of like trade-off uh, uh, that we need to do during design process. And also these models uh, help in uh, uh, not only in design optimization, these models are used, uh, these models are used in controls, A tuning, 
um, uh, and artificial intelligence uh, uh, training programs, etc. So, as I mentioned in uh, 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 previous slides. So, uh, <clears throat> I think we got uh, five more minutes. So, I will try. I would like to do a little demo in in, in our tool. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Marlan, it's called Marlan Impact, and uh, uh, it's Malika based uh, tool. So this is model model on impact. So where uh, you can see uh, model on commercial libraries available here, along with the Modelica standard library here. So this is what uh, Modelica standard library I talked in one of the slides. So this covers almost all possible engineering domains, uh, having uh, uh, covered all the um, uh, building blocks for those domains. For example, if you go into electrical domain, so it has got a basic analog components. Uh, digital components, machine models, etc. Then, if you go into mechanics, uh, it is divided into three domains: multi-body, rotational, and trans translational. And each domain has a, um, its own building blocks. For example, in in rotational, you got like inertia, spring, damper, clutch, gear models, etc. So, likewise, so as I mentioned, so just simply drag and drop these building blocks, and you can build your system model. So you don't need to like uh, always go into the equation layer and type equations. Uh, in most of the cases, you may need to do for advanced usage, uh, but only for uh, complex systems, which are not already captured in the libraries. So likewise, like this free library, there are commercial libraries covering uh, uh, individual domains. For example, electrification. Uh, vapor cycle, vehicle dynamics, hydraulics, etc., and uh, you will have you will get to have the building blocks and example models in those libraries for those particular domains. So I will I will try to like uh, uh, take one example here. Um, in the multi-body uh, mechanics, multi-body, just like uh, uh, show some results. So there is a robot model, a full robot model here. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so basically, for example, it has like a six ax axis, and if you go into the component, so it has further subcomponents. It has got each individual motor and gear attached to that particular axis of the robot, uh, and these are, these are all driven by a particular controller, and uh, um, this is attached to a multi-body model of uh, uh, robot ha uh, uh, hand, basically. So uh, this is this is basically done with the bodies and uh, joints, and I already simulated. Uh, let me plot some results from this. So here you can see um, uh, speed. Okay, so since it is controlled, so you got like actual value versus control uh, uh, reference value for uh, for the axis speed, uh, for the axis angle, and for uh, the uh, the axis and the, the current that goes into motor. Let's see some animation here. Uh, so after the simulation, so so what do you basically um, uh, do on the on the modeling and simulation layer? That's what you see as a response in the animation layer. So likewise, let's cover one more quick example from Wiggle Dynamics Library, um, where a double lane change experiment. So where the vehicle is actually being driven uh, with the driver inputs. So driver is taking and the vehicle into a series of cones in order to clear the cones uh, in a double lane change ma um, uh, manner. So these are some of the outputs that we get from that simulation. For example, this is the steering angle that driver follows, and this is the lateral acceleration that the vehicle uh, 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 responds back. So you can see the animation also here. So you can see like uh, there is a road, uh, then there is a uh, Car model. Um, okay, so I think it's better. Uh, <clears throat> so just just like try to clear the cones in the simulation. Yeah. So so this way you can verify your uh, design in different uh, uh, test scenarios. So that's the purpose. Okay. So getting back to the uh, slides again. So I like to conclude. So we have covered product development concepts, uh, and we talked about MBSC. We talked about uh, different simulations used in automotive design and role of dynamic simulation system simulation. We talked about the importance of open standards in MBSC. 
uh, and uh, we covered a case study of uh, electric pickup truck uh, modeling an electric pickup truck and uh, simulating uh, different scenarios of that uh, vehicle um, like range performance reliability handling and ride comfort and uh, and we also discussed how these models can be utilized in multiple ways like concept evaluation system sizing optimization controls development and a training etc so thanks for your patience so i think we got like 10 more minutes so if you have any questions you can ask now uh, otherwise you can also reach out to me uh, uh, at my email id leverson.dharmasilandmodelon.com and also you can go through our website uh, www.modelon.com slash contact us page thank you yeah so daimola is another commercial tool like model on impact so which supports modelica based modeling is another environment yeah 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 so there is open source called open modelica uh, which which students definitely can uh, start explore and uh, commercial tools also if we contact the uh, company i think uh, yeah uh, we, yeah we can see about the evaluation etc See, so we got like this free uh, Modelica standard library, which has got those examples and building blocks in, in modeling any mechanical system. So with that, I think uh, yeah, people, students can explore. Now it's time for a word of thanks. In this juncture, I'd like to thank Mr. Elavarasan for accepting our request and delivered a beautiful and informative lecture session. I hope the birding engineers have introduced to a new world of model-based systems engineering, including Modelica language and its library and FMI with case study. This area is new to all students and even for faculties in universities. It was interesting to know about modeling of powertrain, brakes, multi-body visualization and finally with an attribute simulation that was more interesting. Getting how to analyze the output data from various attributes regarding the right comfort is an added thing. Now, I like to thank the people behind this webinar, Ms. Sinduja HR and Mr. Elangelian of Modelon and Professor Dr. M. Uttakumaran, Head of the Department and Dr. V. Nagarajan, Principal, Janssen Institute of Technology for making this webinar to happen. Thank you all for joining with us. Stay tuned with JIT EDU YouTube channel for more webinars and have a happy learning. Thank you all.